Why is this particular video the fastest growing K-pop video in history, even though a lot of critics say the song's not that good? You know, they're called Baby Monster, but due to the views, they are like going crazy monster. Oh, uh, we got to talk about it because this is making news in the West, Andrew. We are talking about Baby Monster's debut single, Batter Up, shattering YouTube records for fastest growing K-pop video. And it's really controversial because anytime something makes the news, Andrew, in the West, where people don't like K-pop as much, even though there are some fans, then it, there's like two discussions going on. There's the internal K-pop world fandom, but then there's the comments from the Western world, which sometimes Andrew, get a little racial. Yeah, we're going to get into it, guys. So please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pop boys one thing that might just be as hot as this music video small la sauce uh definitely when you eat it it's definitely hotter than this music video but maybe won't get as many views uh david baby monster if you look up batter up between the actual music video the dance performance the dance practice and then a live performance there's like 200 million views within three weeks. Yes. Which is crazy fast. Super explosive. So Baby Monster, Andrew, they're very young. I don't believe anybody in the group is uh, over the age of 20. They are considered the leaders of the fourth gen of K-pop. Wow. So, but, they're, but it's controversial, Andrew, because people who are fans of the third gen or maybe the second gen, Andrew, they don't like it. That's an internal fandom thing. Mm. However, Andrew, because K-pop is starting to get so popular outside of Asia into new markets, particularly India as a super hot K-pop market for the fourth gen, as well as, of course, as it's always penetrating more into the Western world, the UK world, the American Canadian market. There's, uh, there's comments spanning the range. Right, right. So I guess, David, what is, uh, why do you think it's, this, the, why, do, why do you think it's getting so many views? Like, oh. because... There is some criticism saying this song sounds kind of typical. Like, it's a good song, but it's not great. Right. Some people say it sounds like 2013 Blackpink or a, like a throwaway. Even though, to be honest, the rap part of Batters Up is by far the best part. Oh. Like, the rap part is pretty solid. I think here's the thing. K-pop is a global phenomenon. And you're start, you, you saw it with uh, Gangnam Style. And you saw it with some other things where it's like Western people don't get it. Because it's not like the old days uh, with Justin Bieber, Sorry, where that was such a clear like EDM pop thing from a Western Anglo artist. And it's like now all the records are being set by global artists. And like basically I'm saying like American artists, they don't dictate the YouTube records anymore. Yeah, but YouTube records don't dictate everything in the world either. But it does say something. It means the global attention is on this music video. Also, I think to address the sonic aspect of it, I think that different markets around the world are at a different level of pop sophistication consumption. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, a 2015 or 2012 sounding song could be more appealing to like an emerging market than like Jungkook's Seven Days, right. which may which may be like too sophisticated for mm. some for different markets around the world. Right. Well, I mean, like I think if you look at even like pop markets in smaller countries that are not on the global stage, sometimes their rap music or pop music may sound seven, eight years too late. It may but, sound dated, right? Right, dated, but that's just because that's where their market is at, you know? Right, you're saying that that's just the consumption pattern. Of, uh, that's like sort of their sophistication uh, timeline. Yeah, and I would say this, like about, this is not my favorite K-pop song. Like this batters up. Like there's a lot of other K-pop songs I like more. I like New Jeans for, I like a lot of New Jeans songs, for example. But I will say this, even though it kind of sounds stereotypical in that way, I just feel like this is kind of like also epitomizes K-pop in a, in a true essence where it's like, that's what you kind of come to K-pop for, in my You're opinion. You're saying this interesting mashup of pop, rap, EDM, yeah. house music. This like hardcore K-pop is what I call it. It's kind of like, that is a... Like, you know, and it's like, you know, a lot of like uh, uh, empowering lyrics and very like kind of, I guess, aggressive lyrics for K-pop. But I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, a lot of people would, uh, would question why Sexy Red songs are so popular because she seems kind of stereotypical like hood rat music. But I don't know. A lot of people like that type of music. Yeah. Like it hits you I, somewhere. You know I what agree mean? with you that the music sophistication timeline, sometimes it feels like it doubles back around. Yeah. Cause you know, at first you got, you got Lupe Fiasco and Kendrick and Nas and Jay-Z and you think it's so lyrical. And then it's almost like the next wave of rap is just like super not lyrical. Yeah, It's not always this uh, timeline of like things always getting more infinitely uh, complex because 
Andrew, at the end of the day, music markets are dominated by youth and by emerging markets. Yeah. And ultimately, like, let's say if you're a kid who'd never listened to any K-pop or that much Western pop, you're going to hear this song and it's going to be crazy. Like, right. this is a brand new song. Like, the rap, I mean, she is rapping, the way they're rapping in it is modern. Right. And, and I was thinking for young girls in, like, let's just say third world countries where there may be some sort of old world patriarchy, lyrics like, you better listen, I'm on a mission, no matter what you right. say, I'm gonna have my own opinion. Yeah. That's empowering. And the first time they're really gonna feel something like that, given the life that they've been born into. Remember me? Sting like a bee? Like, that's a hyper good way to learn English for somebody who doesn't speak you know like, know a lot of puns no, and I, I could see a lot of girls who are like learning english or korean for the first time being like sting like a bee and like they're gonna remember that line it's catchy like it's kind of goofy to me but i'm not the main demographic right, for right this. because it's so uh you know and like we said in hip-hop it always people said oh how come after new york rap it was so lyrical and then it went back to like nursery rhymes like you know anyway let's get into the comment section Andrew. this is from yahoo news and of course it broke some youtube records so some people are commenting saying incredible who in america listens to this garbage mm. um a lot of people were saying you know it kind of feels weird to watch girls who look this young act edgy and sexual or kind of do that boom like put it that all that stuff because the youngest girl in baby monster is 14 oh she's 14 yeah but then a lot of people were saying dude in asia it's just way different because you can't apply like western dynamics about like oh is this right or wrong because it's just a completely different culture. Well, their there. society is different. But yeah, I would say, like like I said, this is not my favorite K-pop song. And, you know, I like the soft, I'm super shy type stuff from K-pop. <laughs> I think it sells to me the image better because, you know, growing up on rap music, it's like, I don't really want to see K-pop people like use a lot of You mean of do the, the handguns slang. and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me because there's no guns in Korea. Like, it's, I don't know. I still like people to sell me the image. I, I do think the truth is Asians because of the way we wear what, like the skin or the fat on a face, it appears more neotenous to Western people. I mean, literally one of the girls you just said is like 14 or 15 years old. That's pretty young. Yeah, and not only that, I notice in Asia, if you have like the man face or the woman face, you go into K-dramas. But if you always have that like forever teenage face, you go into pop music. That's kind of how they silo out the looks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Somebody said baby metal over baby monster. So this is uh, actually a J-rock pop group. So a lot of people had discussions, Andrew, about why did J-pop never go global like K-pop? And obviously, this has been really well documented. They have more of a d domestic consumption game plan. They don't really have like a global consumption uh, style plan mm -hmm. for pop music in Japan. It's very uh, domestic dominated. Somebody said, this is such a typical YG song. And uh, YG, Andrew, is one of the major... K-pop companies. Uh -huh. And uh, people are just saying, you know, it's very formulaic. But um, at the end of the day, man, do, do people like formulaic things? Like a lot of people are saying Lil Baby or Drake's music in 2023 just sounds like their old stuff too. Dude, I think, and this is also applies to food tastes, is that people do like to try new things. That is natural. But try new things doesn't mean I want to become a new thing forever and only eat that weird new thing forever. Right. So as much as music progresses or does like weird things, I think the masses, and I'm saying like the average person, which most people are average, most people are the average consumer, they're going to want like the simple stuff. Yeah, I mean, most people we grew up with, their favorite artists are like Chris Brown and like Tyga. Dude, people still just want to eat dumplings, man. Put it in a dumpling. Like... You know, you got all these new crazy different dumpling style. No, just a regular dumpling. What do you think about not only just the uh, American fans are sort of criticizing this new song, but even fans of the second gen or third gen K-pop groups such as Blackpink are kind of loading up the, the ammunition against them. Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like every generation of younger artists, Andrew, they're meant for their own crowd. And of course, people who have moved on or maybe were fans of a more sophisticated era that had more like lyrical writing, they're always going to look at the younger people and judge them. But they, they're looking for the music to meet them where they're at at this point in life. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, for example, a lot of Baby Monster fans are like, 10 years old in India. No, literally. Like, they could be, like, 12-year-old girls. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's just get to these major questions, Andrew. Why do people like K-pop? Uh, there are so many posts about it on the internet. People are saying the catchy hooks. But you know what I ultimately think it is? I think it's because it's rooted in a world where it really doesn't get more edgier than pop life. 
Mm. Like in America, the reason why pop groups don't sell anymore is because life is so harsh and you've already seen these pop stars have all this wild stuff happen to them outside of the pop world. So I just don't think it's like the early 80s where it's this Michael J. Fox, like Tom Cruise, like Top Gun. You know what I'm talking about? Like Breakfast Club, you could really sell it back then. Nowadays, I just feel like the Western world has gotten so crazy, you know, quote unquote, like degenerate. You can't even believe that the pop stars are that cheesy anymore. Yeah. Whereas in Asia, it really is that clean. You know, I'm not saying there's not some stuff going on behind the scenes, of course, the suicides and things like that. But like, literally, it's a very clean, sort of like sanitized society. Yeah, I would say like, maybe for K-pop, even more than a lot of American music, maybe except for EDM, it kind of has that same effect, like it's escapism to a different world that you might not live in. But things like American music or rap music, for example, is so rooted in like, supposedly re rooted in reality, right? Right. Like, like people, extreme reality. Yeah, extreme anything. reality. Like they're trying to bring the reality to you versus like for other forms of art or other types of music, it's almost like escapism. Like take me to this place where they're dancing in this big room and just everybody's in sync with each other. And just like the girls are like these cute little girls, but got a lot of attitude. Right. Like, it's sort of like a lo-fi visualizer where the girls got the coffee and the headphones and the cat and the train is rolling by in the window. Like that's such a popular you know, spirited yeah. away visualizer for lo-fi music. I just think it kind of reminds me of Powerpuff Girls, which is funny because New Jeans does a lot of stuff with Powerpuff where it's like, you know, in Powerpuff, they're like, I'm going to destroy you. But it, you never really feel it because it's all taking place within the Powerpuff world. So that's why when the girls in Baby Monster are like, Brat, you better shoot you. You know, I moved you. And it's like, you just know that they, like nobody's even seen a gun before. So that's why it can sell. And I just think that that's just where it's at. And that's why... People really like analyzing that world. They like participating in different fandoms. It almost feels like you're following like La Liga or something like that, almost like a sports league. Mm. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. What do you guys think about K-pop? Why is it so popular? Why was Baby Monster as a fourth generation debut group able to amass like such a crazy following so quickly? And why were other fandoms from the second and third generation judging him? And what do older Western people really think about K-pop? Why? Is their music so infectious? How did it get this many views? Even for K-pop, I am still impressed. And you know what is crazy? The aesthetics really remind me of like 2000s Bad Boy with a Diddy. Like, mm -mm. You know, people love nostalgia. And actually for a new audience, they don't even know it's nostalgia. And they never will. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace.